All right, so we're going to continue this week with. Uh, the... I just got back on Sunday, Saturday from Florida. Oh, right on. Yep. It, is it was a lot of fun. It's all right. Um, but we're going to continue with the American Heart Association's uh, Healthy for Life. Uh, PowerPoints and, and I guess, lessons. Um, and so this one, this was a topic that Kevin picked out and it's on decision-making while grocery shopping, essentially is the, the basic gist. Um, and trying to make uh, choices while you're grocery shopping that are healthy for your body, but also good for your wallet uh, and making smart budgeting decisions when, when buying foods at the grocery store. And so we've got a few different resources that I can share in the chat after we, we finish up here. Um, but we'll click and, and go through this PowerPoint and then we will we'll open it up for uh, a quick discussion at the at the end. There is one healthy thing I do try to buy, and it's cauliflower pizza. Yeah, very very good. The cauliflower crust pizza, and always it, a solid option. You can even tell it's cauliflower. Yeah, it's it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. There's all kinds of really cool stuff: gluten free, uh, vegan, all kinds of of good food options nowadays. What page are we on to? All right. So we just moved to the second slide. All right, cool. Thank you. And so, so just a quick, another quick rundown. So we'll go through the introduction and then smart shopping in a grocery store. Then we'll look at what a unit price is go over some healthy shopping tips and uh, do a, a grocery store tour, but not an actual grocery store tour. Um, and talk about some of the different types of these healthy foods that we can look at. And then there is a resource for a a big green monster smoothie recipe. So we will we will look at that and then finally talk about some some goal setting measures for for this specific topic. And so these are sort of the key takeaways that we hope you all can walk away with. And that's describe at least two tips for, for a heart healthy grocery shopping. Hi Miles. Um, and then understand when to choose fresh, frozen, or canned fruits and vegetables as you shop for cost-effective meals, and then learn how to compare the unit prices. And so, let's see here. And this, this will be another part of the, the resources that I can share in the chat, I believe. Um, but we'll talk a little bit more about this. Um, and just how grocery stores are sort of typically laid out. Um, and sorry, having some technical difficulties here. Sure, I got a question. We'll go ahead and get right into that. What's up? I so said I got a question on that slide really quick. That's actually a good uh, sure. slide right there. But Trent, I mean, um, for like the avocados, I'm I, I know they would be fresh fruits and vegetables, uh, but isn't there like a way where like people make them? Yes. Yeah. Fruits and vegetables? I'm teaching right now. Sorry, what, go go ahead. Sorry, Hayden. I said, isn't there a way where like people make them frozen fruits and vegetables too, or no? With the avocados, I, I know that they're on the fresh 
for oh sense. well actually that's a good question um and we'll be talking about that pretty soon i i don't think i've ever actually had avocados frozen specifically now that you've said that um but i know that you can get uh like guac preserved um guacamole um in the refrigerated section i'm sure there are ways that you can store avocados that way but uh i don't think i ever have had frozen frozen avocados so hey uh just a reminder you guys if if y'all aren't um speaking to um to mute um because that way we don't hear the background noises and it just makes editing the video more easy yes thank you morgan mm -hmm. All right, we will watch this video and then I'll turn it over to you, Kevin. You got it. I don't think I can hear it. Oh yeah, Trent, uh, yeah, we can't hear it either. I know what the issue was. Let's try that again. <clears throat> Thank you guys for, for letting me know. Uh, wait, let me try that one more time. I'm a local store's nutrition expert. Let me take you on a quick guided tour to learn where to find the healthiest foods in your grocery store. Fresh fruits and vegetables are a good starting point when you arrive at the grocery store. Then whole grain breads, the seafood section, meat and deli, dairy, and the frozen fruits and vegetables section. In the middle aisles, you can still find some healthy choices, such as canned fruits and vegetables with no added sugar or low sodium herbs and spices, and whole grain foods. However, there are many less healthy, non-perishable groceries in these aisles, so try to spend the bulk of your time on the perimeter. Thank you for joining me today. Hope you'll always have a happy and healthy shopping experience. So, sorry, I've got to go back and try this again. Hey, Trent. Yes. My mom's got something to say about the avocados. Oh, yeah. Yeah, feel free. Definitely. Yeah. Well, it says ripe avocados can be frozen, mashed, or pureed, as well as in half or chunks and kept for <clears throat> four to six months. But when you do that, you have to add lemon juice and seal the avocado tightly in plastic or with a vacuum sealer to minimize the browning. Okay, I see. Thank you for, for sharing When you that. make guacamole, the, the mixture, you know, the pureed, if you leave the seed in it, it won't turn brown. Oh, okay. That's interesting. That makes, that makes sense. Yeah, I, I always get worried about that because anytime I get guac, I'm, you know, that's always the first thing. It'll go, that yeah. top layer will turn brown after like a day. So. If you make it from fresh though, you leave the big seed in, in it from making it fresh and it will keep it from turning brown so quickly. Okay, right on. Well, great, great information. I'm, I'm learning something new too, so. So awesome. you want me? Yeah, yeah, you can go ahead, Kevin. When you are planning your next trip to the grocery store, try to remember this phrase, shop smart, to shop smart, focus your shopping where healthy foods are usually located. Fruits and vegetables are a great starting point when you are arriving at the grocery store. Next slide. Ne next, look for the whole green breads. Next slide. In the seafood selection, choice a non-breaded flavor fish, except fish that 
high in omega-3 included salmon, tuna, trout, trout, and um, and and I'm hearing. Next slide. In the meat and deli section, remember to limit your purchase of red meats and processed red meats. Next slide. In the dairy area, look for low fat and fat free products. Next slide, okay. As you're checking out the store selection of frozen fruits and vegetables, well, talking more, I'll type of fruits and vegetables in a minute. Next slide. In the middle aisles, you can find, in, in the middle aisles, you can still find some healthy items such as canned fruits and vegetables without added sugar or sodium, whole grain foods, nuts and seeds and herbs and spices. Choose carefully in the middle aisles. There are many less health, healthier non-perishable items. There is widespread book time of your in the permit of the store. Yeah, so as Kevin was saying, um, that's typically what the, the layout is gonna look like. You're gonna have your fresh fruits and vegetables, then the bread, then the meat, and then the, the dairy and frozen on the, on the other side. I think that's how, I think most of the Kroger's here in Lexington are, are set up as well. Um, but that's just a general guideline. Um, you know, sometimes there's gonna be super unhealthy foods in those sections. Like sometimes there's like, that's where the pastries are, you know? So it's, it's not a perfect guideline for where the healthy foods are. And you can definitely find healthy foods in the other aisles of the grocery store, obviously. Um, but hopefully what we talk about uh, throughout the rest of the, these slides, you'll be able to see where some of those options are and what to look for when you, you come across those options. Okay, uh, and then Kevin, I think. Yes, this is what it is. Means. Okay, All right. go ahead. This video discussed the unit price and serving size when you comparing foods and products in the store to determine the most affordable, healthy options, high, highlighting the ease of budgeting and producing ingredients for a healthy meals. Budgeting and purchasing ingredients for healthy meals can be easy when we're equipped with the right tools. Start by planning meals each week, making a shopping list and finding local coupons. Here are some budget-friendly tips. While grocery shopping for healthy foods, make sure to compare unit prices to help you choose the most affordable options. A unit price is the cost per specific measurement unit. For example, ounce, pound, gram, kilogram, for example, if you're deciding which whole wheat loaf of bread to purchase, you can look at their price tags and look for the price per ounce. If this number isn't provided for you, you can always calculate it yourself. Divide the number of pounds or other specific measurement unit by the package's total price. It's also a good practice to locate the nutrition facts label and look at the serving sizes to determine how many people in your family that food can serve. Smart shopping on a budget means knowing how to plan ahead, compare unit prices, use coupons, and select the healthiest option. Hope these shopping tips will help make your next grocery store trip easier and more affordable. So unit price is kind of a, it can be kind of a hard topic to to understand, uh, and I think that video does a really good job of breaking it down. But the good thing about unit price is that most of the time um, you can look on the, on the shelf, like the video says, and it'll actually have a label where it says, okay, this is the unit price. And so the unit price, if you're comparing it to what's 
what other options there are, the unit price will be the true cheapest option for maximizing your money, right? So, um, and again, it, it can be a little confusing, but you know, one item might have more and be a little bit more expensive than an item that has less, but the value of those two products, you aren't gonna know for sure until you look at the unit price to see which one actually is a better deal. Um, so if you are comparing prices, it's always good to compare the unit prices. Um, and again, like the person in the video said, you can always just divide it. Or even if you're, if it's something with like multiple items, instead of dividing it by weight, you can just divide by the number of items that are in a, um, in a, my, my mind is blinking, but in a product period. And it's the same thing, you can you do it with fruits too, like fruits and vegetables. So like in Kroger, I know, uh, which you can probably do it at like Walmart and the other grocery stores around town as well. But you actually weigh, if you get fresh fruits and vegetables, you're actually weighing them uh, when you get there, which I mean, again, it's different because obviously uh, the price is already set for what you're, what you're weighing, but it's still sort of a similar process. And I'll try to send that, that video in the chat. Um, that does a, a better job of, of explaining it. But, but yeah, so essentially unit price is just the total price divided by, and this says number of ounces, but it can be divided by the number of, of items that you're getting, or it can be divided by pounds. Um, you're just trying to find out essentially what's the best value and what you're, what you're buying. That's what you're looking for whenever you are evaluating a unit price. And so oftentimes too, if the unit price isn't listed out, you can get a lot of this information from the nutrition facts that are on the, uh, where the ingredients are. <clears throat> and so, okay. And so in the notes here, it says, if you're deciding which whole grain loaf of bread to purchase, you can look at their prices and then look for the price per ounce. If this number isn't provided for you, you can always calculate it yourself by finding the number of ounces in the package and dividing the total, num the total price of the item by the number of ounces. It's also a smart habit to locate the nutrition facts label and look at the serving sizes to determine how many in your family that food can serve. Budgeting and purchasing ingredients for healthy meals can be easy when you're equipped with the right tools. So again, it's, I know it's kind of a weird concept that we don't often, often think about, at least I'm not often thinking about it, but it can be extremely helpful. All right, so now we'll transition to talking about canned versus frozen versus fresh foods. Fresh, frozen, and canned. Fresh foods are often less expensive during their harvest season. When shopping for frozen and canned options, compare food labels and choose products with the lowest amounts of sodium and added sugars. Frozen fruits and veggies are picked at the peak of ripeness and then flash frozen to preserve optimal nutrition. They last for several months in the freezer and can be a very economical choice. Canned fruits and veggies are convenient to have in your pantry for times you can't get to the store. They can even be kept at work with a can opener for an afternoon snack. Since they don't expire quickly, you won't waste money when buying canned veggies, which sometimes happens with fresh produce that goes bad. The good news is that all produce counts, which means canned, fresh, and frozen varieties can help you reach your goal. All ready. Are you ready for me, Trent? Yep. 
All right. Now let's talk about fruit and but now let's talk about products. You should aim for four servings or two cups of fruit per day and five servings or two and a half cups of vegetables per day. The good good the good news is that cans and frozen for for arsenic are are equal at health healthy as fresh products and they all count towards your goals. Okay, right on. Thank you, Kevin. All right. Canned fruits and vegetables are convenient to have in your pantry when you can't get to the store. They can even be kept at work. Be sure to have a can opener in order to open it at your own convenience. You don't have to worry about using them right away as you do with fresh fruits and vegetables, which can spoil easily. Be sure to watch out for the sodium. Sodium is usually added to canned foods to preserve them. Look on can labels to identify no salt added or low sodium vegetables. Compare the sodium on the nutrition facts label and choose a product with the lowest amount. Rinse and drain canned veggies to get, even, to get rid of even more sodium. So like dilute it with water, drain some of that salt out. Watch for added sugar. Look for fruit that's canned in water, its own juice, or light syrup, which you can also rinse and drain. Next slide. Delicious uses of canned goods. Add rinsed and drained cans of corn, tomatoes, and pinto beans, or any other vegetable to a fat-free, low-sodium chicken broth for a super fast and filling vegetable soup. Use a blender, a food processor, or a fork to mash rinse and drain chickpeas, great northern beans, or your favorite beans into a bean dip for baby carrots. You can also add a little lemon juice and garlic powder for some taste and some zip. Serve canned fruit as a dessert topped with low-fat, no-sugar-added yogurt, or top whole grain cereal with canned fruit. Frozen fruits and vegetables are picked at the peak of ripe, ripeness and then um, flash frozen <clears throat> to preserve op opt optimal nutrition. They last for several months in the freezer and can be a very eco economical choice. What, watch for sodium, compare the sodium content on the nutrition facts label and choose the product with the lowest amount. amount. Sauces and seasonings can contain excess salt, and add calories. Uh, watch for added sugar. Choose 100% frozen fruits without added sugars. Yeah, that's, um, there's a lot of uh, really good information there. Um, it is, the, the sodium one is such a, a big, a big component because we all probably can consume, maybe not all of us, but I know I personally do. And I know a lot of others do consume way too much sodium. Um, and that can, can really lead to um, a lot of, of issues with our bodies down the line. And so you definitely want to always be looking for uh, things that increase sodium. And if you're comparing items, you definitely want to look out for that. And it's the same with, with added sugar, like, um, well, in, in canned and frozen products too. Um, and so like Morgan said, you want to, you want to try to do the, so sometimes with canned, you get that sort of 100% frozen juice, even though it, or 80% frozen juice, um, and they can still they can still take a lot of leeway with that. But if you if you're getting a canned 
or if you're getting frozen fruits, you definitely want to get the 100% frozen fruits. So they aren't adding in any extra, um, any extra sugar. Uh, delicious uses. When you boil pasta, throw in some frozen veggies at the at the end of the cooking time for added nutrient nutrients and variety. Um, whip up a smoothie of unsweetened frozen fruit and fat-free or low-fat milk and yogurt. Thaw frozen berries and stir them into muffin or quick bread batter or even your morning oatmeal. All right. Megan, did, did you have a question? I did. Um, I was going to mention that we should also pay attention to the amount of calories in frozen canned stuff because um, that could be high in calorie. Most yeah, of them. No. That's, that's a, that's a good point. So if they're yeah. adding, um, if they're adding stuff in to the frozen or canned product, that's going to naturally increase the calories. And so, um, that is something that you can sort of an easy identifier too, is, is looking at the calories. And if you're comparing products that, especially if they have the, if they're the same, Right. Yeah. The same amount of fruit, but if one of them is way more calories, then you're going to know that there's most likely they've they've added in um, probably some stuff that's not too healthy. So yeah, that's that's a great great suggestion, Megan. Frank, can I share something really quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um, well, what I do whenever I go to the stores and stuff. Um, my parents have taught me well uh so um <laughs> like whenever i get like a bag of chips or something you know i just gotta read like this so you don't think and it says like it will say like um i guess you can say like 15 um chips per and then it would say like that equals like an ounce of sodium or something like that so i've actually been eating like that um you know and i mean uh, I, you know, back in the days I used to eat basically only soup and salad too, um, which, which helps you get act, which helps you get, um, motivated and stuff, you know? Um, and yeah. Yeah, that's, that's great. I've, I've been eating Thank fruits and sharing. veggies. I've just been eating broccoli. That's good. Hey, broccoli's that's that's my that's my go-to vegetable. So, broccoli and carrots with honey on them. Oh my gosh, there's nothing like broccoli it. Broccoli with what on with what on them? I'm sorry, I missed that. I said I, we either have broccoli, green beans, or um, asparagus, <clears throat> or we have carrots with honey on them. Oh, okay. There's one way for me to right eat on. carrots. Or there's um, another option you can use. Um, Vegetables with hummus. Mm. Yes, that's that's another. Or uh, possibly peanut butter. Choice. <gasps> yeah. Megan, I, I knew we were some protein. Remember protein. Megan, yeah, I knew we were best important. friends. I knew you liked peanut butter. Yeah. <laughs> that's I my love food. peanut butter. I love right. peanut butter. I can't help it. I have peanut butter with my banana almost every day. <sighs> that's good. And it's a great way to keep your potassium and also high fiber protein. Yay, I'm doing That's something right. right. <laughs> That's right. right. I guess I don't have to have chocolate. Does that count as, I don't know, is sodium in chocolate? Typically, um, I think there is. chocolate oh. will have to, sodium, but some some chocolates can be healthy in moderation, like dark chocolate if eaten in you know, if you're not eating like a ton of it every day, but if you eat, but it's not, it's not very sweet, but if you eat sort of the pure, uh, or pure is not the right word, but the, um, 
uh, there's like a specific term for it, but it can actually be very healthy for your, for your body. Um, what about now again, you don't want to eat that in like excess and it's not like milk no. chocolate where it's super sweet, yeah. but, uh, if you sort of adjust to the, the taste, it can be, and it's, it's almost like it's, it's too bitter to where it's not something that you would eat a lot in one sitting anyways, but yeah. 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 It can be a, it can be a great, a great healthier snack. Hey, Trent, Philip has a question. Okay, thank you for letting me know. Yeah, sorry, I can only see like two people at a. No, yeah, that's good. Okay. Um, sometimes they, um, sometimes, sometimes can sometimes come with a top sometimes, and sometimes you have to use a can opener and stuff. Yeah, that's that's true. Yeah. You definitely. Um, yeah. Sometimes you can find those, and sometimes in the stores and stuff. Where yeah, you that's that's a really them. good point. Yeah. You definitely want to make sure that you have a can opener available. I know that some cans now are like sort of like pop lids. Yeah, yeah, they the pop, yeah. Pull them off, but pull them off, the, yeah. there's still a lot of cans though that definitely do require a can opener. Um, yeah. So yeah, definitely, definitely a great suggestion. And, and I, I think like you, I like the dark chocolate too. I like dark chocolate. <laughs> yeah, me dark. too. Me too. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Even um, chocolate Hershey Kisses too. Yeah, Hershey. Um, I, Hershey Kisses may not be a healthy option, but they're they're definitely a. a tasty oh, it's option. also um, dark chocolate as well too. It could be dark fudge or, um, chocolate 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 fudge or something like that. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm. Um, I know that's not the best healthiest um choice for candy, but um, it's also a, a chocolate something to snack on, I guess. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, no, for yeah. sure. You do, I, I should, I should qualify. There are some dark chocolates that are, that are not very healthy. Um, so some of the ones that are sort of, that you would just get up, get in a candy aisle that probably do have a lot more added sugar. Um, those probably aren't going to be super healthy for at least, you know, eating every day. Um, but so you, you, you do kind of have to watch out if that is something that you are interested in. Um, but like I said, you can, you can look at the ingredients and compare and see, but if you look and it's got the same amount of sugar as a milk chocolate bar, then, you know, pro probably not the best deal. Cause I know that some, uh, some of the candy industries will, they'll really push dark chocolate options as a healthier option, even if it's really not. So <clears throat> uh, that is something that you really do have to pay attention to and you, you'll you want to look at if you are um, interested. But I will turn, is, I think this is Mo or Colin? I think this I one's think. Colin. I think I got the second one. Okay, gotcha. Yep. Sorry, my bad. You're, no, you're <clears throat> good. Couldn't remember how we, I was, how we broke that up. I know I was wondering the same thing, but I think this one's uh, Colin. But I don't. I, I know Colin might not be available for the whole I can, call, so I can. I can. Do oh, okay. It. Do you? Okay. Go ahead, Mo. Yeah, I can do it. Fresh fruits and vegetables are easy. Are easy portable choices. Whenever you leave the house, get into the habit of stashing a fresh snack in your in your purse or backpack think think apple orange banana grapes or baby carrots these snacks will keep you in energized and help you avoid less healthy snacks at the vending machines look for seasonal choices your heart healthy recipes will taste even better with produce that's in season. So in season means like, um, like certain foods may taste better or it's a good time to grow these, uh, these um, foods um, at a certain time. 
Yeah, yeah, that's that's absolutely right. Um, so there's there's certain foods that are in season more throughout the year. So sometimes I don't know if you guys ever notice this if you're going and you're getting whatever specific fruit, but it tastes kind of weird. And then you go the next week and it still kind of tastes, it doesn't taste as good. But then if you get it in the spring or summer, it's like amazing. So that all has to do with how, how the fruits are, are grown, um, which I know now they've shipped them from all over the country into these, these bigger grocery stores. So it's, it's not as much of an issue, but it definitely makes a, a difference, especially if you go to the the local markets during the summertime and get fresh fruit and vegetables, man, it's like totally, totally different world. All right. Sorry to cut you off. Morgan. No, no, you're good. Uh, I was just going to say, and if Colin's still not here, I can read this one too. Uh, yeah, you, you got it. I think, okay. Uh, I, don't, I think he's busy. Yeah, no problem. Uh, delicious use uses always top sandwiches with extra vegetables serve cut cut up veggies with hummus <clears throat> or a light dip of a healthy snack serve a colorful fruit salad for dessert and pu pureed fruits and veg veggies to sauces smoothies soups and more for a boost of flavor and nutrients. All right. So here is sort of a general breakdown of when things are, are in season. So like apples, for instance, you know, apple orchards are, are very popular in the fall. Um, <clears throat> Of course, you can get a lot of, of, you can get a pretty good apple most mostly year round at the grocery store, um, but definitely a fun activity to do in the fall. Um, but spring, summer, you've got lots of, of really good options and winter. It, it is really interesting too. This is like sort of a, a total aside, but it has to do with where a lot of these, these fruits and vegetables are native to and the climates that they're, they're grown in. So that's, that's what plays the, the central role in determining what, when they're in season. Um, and so too, like this, this tip says, fresh foods are often less expensive during their harvest season. Um, and says you may even save money by buying in bulk because there's obviously if there's going to be a lot more right when it's when it's in that season and so shop the farmer's market to learn more about produce um, i know there's some really really uh insightful people down at the one in uh if you guys are in lexington on saturdays i know that they have that that market downtown and there's some really knowledgeable people down there that would have a lot more information than what I can, what I can share, or what we can share. Um, hey, Trent. Yeah, what's up? Um, would you mind blowing that up just a little, please? So I'm going to, I'm going to try to send this to you because I don't think I can make it bigger without. Uh, oh. So let me, I'll, I'll try to s send it. Um, one of the things that I, that I send to you guys, if I can, um, hey, cause I, I know it is really hard to, to see. And I apologize. Hey, Trent. This is supposed hey, to Trent. be like a, a handoff that you get if we were in hey, person. Trent. Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Kevin. The uh, next couple screens shows you the um, pictures of the different stuff. What, what is, what is in order for that, like that spring. Is a, that is a yep. good point. That is a very, yep. very good point. So like on this one, that's big. Yep. So it sort of goes through the. Um, thank you for that that reminder, Kevin. You are welcome. But yeah, got. Hey, so Kevin. We're, we're sort of in the late uh, spring, early early summer period now. Child. Yep. 
So you got hey, all, all hey, kinds Trent. of good stuff. Most of the eggplants. Trent. Yep. Can I share something really quick? And it goes with the slide before uh, spring foods, if you're wondering. Um, yeah, sure. But uh, it's a good thing that you actually mentioned farmer markets <laughs> because my girlfriend's brother and uh, her mom actually went to Lowell's on Preston and there's actually a farmer's market out there on uh, Saturday mornings, I do believe. Um, mm -hmm. And so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, then, that's awesome. Yeah, and then my coach, uh, my softball coach, she's actually been I can softball coach too, but uh, she actually has her own garden to where she'll grow her own vegetables, and we've actually got okra from her and put it in the air fryer, and boy, oh boy, it was yummy. Right? Yeah, my, my mom does the same thing. She does a, a garden every year. A um, couple of my favorite things will be in the, the summertime too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, me too. Yep. Me too. I will be asking that question in a few minutes. I'm a big I'm a big plum guy. And I feel like you, you definitely plums are one of the, the fruits where they're really only really good during the, the summer. Yeah. So it's, okay. it's hard to find a good plum in the, the middle of winter. So yeah. um, Trent, I got a question. I, I don't know why I haven't seen them yet. Uh, where would the strawberries be located at on in like the uh, would they be in the? I believe strawberries are summer. Yeah. Okay. To the best I, of yeah, my knowledge. I would say you're right. Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm clicking through these at a no. I, I would say you're right. On strawberries. But no, I I think I believe I'm again. I'm not a hundred percent sure. I know that strawberries are like. So with a lot of the more popular fruits like strawberries, you're, uh, they try to keep them, you know, year round in um, like keeping them, them ripe year round. Um, but let me, it's usually, so according to Google um, or a website on Google, it says, that national strawberry season typically runs January through November. So that's pretty much all year. Um, and they're typically harvested in April and May. But I, I know that like the markets, they typically, they typically have, uh, you know, their, their best strawberries, I think during the, the summer. Um, But here's some, some great tips for, for buying seasonal produce. And it's the, the clouds have, it's gotten so dark in my room. Uh, yeah, that's what I, that's why I had. I tried, my, tried to do this with the, the light turned off. I, think I did was, too. I had to turn my light back so on. So bright earlier. Now it's dark in here. Um, you sense a dark cloud overhead, Trent? Yeah, it's, it's, there's no, uh, no sun out right now where I am. That's no. It's raining over here where I am, so. Yeah, yeah, I think it's uh -oh. raining. Um, but yeah, yeah, for some some great great tips. All right, guys, I have a question for for y'all right right now, please. Who okay. Can, who can tell me what fruit and vegetables are 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 in season right now. Uh, blueberries. I think yeah, I think that's right. I think blueberries. Yeah. Are Yay! In season I got right one. Now. Look at me go. How about tom tomatoes? Tomatoes are in season. Yeah. Yes. That's right. How about summertime. cabbage? Yes. Uh, cabbage, I don't know off the top of my head. It was pretty good. What about one of those slides? It probably was. What about Corn? carrots? That carrots. is a spring one. Spring, is uh, that spring? Spring one. Okay. Yeah, hey, well, what about I, um, strawberries? So we're yeah. kind of close. 
Yeah, I think I think carrots and strawberries could both classify as being in season now. Yeah. For corn. Sure. So corn, I think, is late summer, I believe. Ah. But I, I think I mean I'm sure some we're technically in summer, so I, I would say oh, it counts. Oh no, I messed up, <laughs> Kevin. I'm sorry. That's all right. That's that's just my my uneducated <laughs> guess. I know that my mom typically harvests her corn in August. That's right, that's the uh, only only thing I'm basing that on. <laughs> all right. What about blackberries? I... What did you say? Blackberries. Yeah, I would say that's definitely a definitely a summer summer harvest. Dang, nabbit. Wait, no, I, no right. I think you're right. I think I think we're in summer. It's oh, the, it's the end of May. wow. We're, we're close enough. All right, guys, I, I got you all know, one more question. Okay. If your favorite fruits and vegetables are not in season, what are, what are your options? Buy them on eBay? <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, I got a good answer to that, buddy. If, if all right. Fruit, fruits or vegetables are not in season what should you do it's easy try new fruit and try new vegetables oh yeah. great suggestion that's hayden. a good one hayden that is a great one great job I, I i i like that one thank you you're welcome okay all righty yeah that's that's great um let's I'm I'm gonna click through this because we're we're running out of time, and I'm gonna try to share those resources with you all. Um, this is the weekly meal plan, which we've talked about this before, so we won't go too much into it. Um, but again, a great thing for planning out exercise and, and meals if you are interested in doing that. Um, Do planning walks. a grocery list ahead, breaking it out into categories. Which again, that's that's something we've talked about, so we won't go, go too much into it. I'm All sorry, right. what was that? Um, and then Kevin, right. if you want to. All right. So thing. how do do I say we? Here is a good go. So yeah, I I think that. Okay. The goal here, presented is a good goal. Yeah, go ahead. Here is a good goal. I will be a smart and fearless shopper. Here, here is a smart goal. When you're buying items at the grocery store, I compare at least two different options in pointing the healthiest, cheapest one. Yeah, so, so like Kevin said, you know, the first goal is really good, but a smart goal is it's specific, it's measurable, it's attainable, it's relevant, it's time-based. So it, it breaks everything out, right? Because yes. we, we sometimes have a lot of trouble um, with goals that are too broad. And again, this is something that we've talked about a lot. And so using this method to break things down can really make a huge difference. Um, for All our right. topics and hey, will, I'm going to try to stop this so I can share those resources. Go ahead, Hayden. I was about to say, can I share this one thing that I actually really just found from my cell phone? Because uh, I, I was going to try to cheat. I guess I'm being honest. I was going to try to cheat and name the ones that are in season from my cell phone, but it, it actually didn't help me out. But um, there's this website called seasonalfoodguide.org. Okay. And if you go on to that, you can, it'll, it'll pull up like your, um, state. So I did Kentucky and then it will do it any month and any produce and it will actually tell you when like, so my first Whoa, thing that's did, super cool can you share that yeah. in the in the chat yes uh, that's, a, that's a great resource yes um, i think i know what app you're talking about hayden i think i've used it once it's it's a good app yeah that's that's super awesome 
and I'm, I'm going to share some resources as well as Hayden. What is it again? Them. So it's a it's an app that allows you to search by state, and you can view what produce is in season. Whoa! So pretty that's, pretty cool. Uh, that's a little hmm. Uh, let's see here. There you go. I just that, that's the thing that seasonal I, food guide. Seasonalfoodguide.com, and then you it should pull you up to a page to find find what's in season near you, and then in Kentucky or wherever. Sorry, I'm trying to go through this really quick and pull up. So Trent, I can definitely say one of my favorite vegetables is actually in season right now. And that, thanks to this app, it actually let me discover that. And that's actually asparagus. So asparagus. Yeah, okay, right, on. right on. Asparagus is actually an I like asparagus too, Hayden. Me too. Me too. <laughs> yeah, asparagus is, and, is pretty clutch. Definitely. A, and, bro and broccoli too. Mm-hmm. Yep, can't, can't broccoli, go wrong. Broccoli with cheese, hard to beat. Yeah. Ooh, broccoli with broccoli vegan with cheese. It's for no, me. no, with lemon. Vegan cheese? Where do you get vegan yeah, cheese no, from? We, we used to live in the Kroger. Huh? Oh, get it from Kroger. Okay, I think that's most, the most of the, the resources. No, lemon, so fresh lemon squeezed on broccoli. Good. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You can do sometimes, all kinds of stuff with sometimes, broccoli. Some, sometimes. Yeah. 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 You can put lemon in it and stuff. It's good that way. Hey, Kate, I hate to bust your bubble, but it, it actually is saying that broccoli is not in well, it, it's saying that broccoli is actually not grown in May. It's actually grown in June and a little bit of July and October and November. So, oh, man. Sorry. Oh, geez. Sorry, Kate. Oh, come on, man. You bursted my bubble. Why'd you do that, Hayden? Hey, Kate, do you <laughs> mean... Kate, do you mean burst my own? Right. Uh, one of my favorite vegetables is also Brussels sprouts, and Brussels sprouts are actually not grown in May either. They're actually grown in September, October, and November. Oh, well, okay. I also like sweet potatoes. I got to wait. What, Ben? Sweet potatoes. Okay. Oh, yeah, sweet potatoes. I like sweet potatoes. I've tried Brussels sprouts. No. No. Yeah. Yeah, I like carrots and green beans. Yeah. You guys have any more specific questions? Sorry, I was trying to make sure I had all the, and I shared a bunch of the, the resources and okay. Hey, Ben Atkins, let me burst your bubble really quick, okay? Yeah, yeah, that's my bubble. I, I'm sorry to tell you, Blake, <laughs> but sweet potatoes are not uh, like grown until September. Oh man, that's, Hayden, that's why I'm not telling you my favorites because you're not busting my bubble. <laughs> oh, hey, good for um, you, Morgan. You, you can still hey. get most of these these fruits Kelly. and vegetables year round, but hey, Kelly, I like the. <laughs> If you're getting them from a market, then then that's the. That's She's the, good. Hey Kelly. Yeah. Have you seen my shirt? Have you seen my shirt? What I'm wearing today? Athlete ambassador polo. Yes. Nice. Yep. Hi Kelly. That's awesome, Kevin. Hi. Hi Kim. Hi. Yes. Hey Kim. Hello. 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 Hi Sushi's good. I can eat. That's my. I can eat sushi, and I. Uh, I like it really good. People like sushi. 
Well, that's right, Nate. How are you doing, Phyllis? Lucy comes out here. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? Hey, All hey, right, guys. Brent, I think Ben Atkins has something to say. Okay, Ben. Also, also like uh, carrots and green beans too. Yep, those are those are all all wonderful green wonderful beans, fruits and vegetables. Ben, what were you gonna say about sushi? Share that really quick. I think oh yeah. Yeah, you can also get sushi too. At the grocery yep. stores. Yep. 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 That's that's right. Uh, you certainly can. Five dollars oh, sushi oh. at Kroger's. Everyone. Yep. Yep. Oh, all, all right, right guys. guys. I think we're gonna gonna yeah. wrap it up for today, but we've got a few big things mm -hmm. coming up. So we've got summer games mm -hmm. coming up on Saturday the fifth, and I believe and Kelly and Kim can correct me if I'm wrong. It's gonna be from nine a.m. to two p.m at ek uh, um so i hope you hopefully you guys are all all excited and, and ready for that if you're going to be able to attend i'll be um, there trent i'll be there i'll be there all right right on i'll, I'll be there i'm I'll excited be. to see all of you guys in person can't wait i'll be i'll be doing the 5k if you're interested oh, right in watching on. me that's awesome yeah i'm I gonna will. be tired that day <laughs> well, I'll, I'll make sure to, to try and see all of you guys. Um, Yay! And then we'll be back for Wellness Wednesday on June 9th. Okay. All right. We'll we'll see you all there. Yes. See you guys. Right. Doing a yeah. 50 and 100 meter dash. Bye. Oh, nice. That's Bye. awesome. Bye. All right. See you guys. Right. Best Bye, of luck to you guys at the game. Bye. Good to see you. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye.